What's up guys, it's MCJ, Matt Collins Jones, and today we are doing something a little bit different. We're going to step outside of my comfort zone a little bit, uh, and I'm going to be talking about some Devi things. Note that I'm not a dev at all. So today what we're going to be talking about is an introduction to JSON. JSON is a, a language that is used quite heavily inside the Power Platform. It's used with a lot of APIs and things like that. And it's one of my most noted requests to actually talk about JSON, to you know understand JSON a little bit better, how it's structured, how you can interrogate it. So over the next few videos, I'm going to be looking at JSON. This one's going to be an introduction to JSON. In the next few videos, I'm actually going to show you working with JSON and the Power Platform inside of things like Power Automate. But today, this is just going to be what is JSON, how does it look, how does it work. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So instantly, you know that this has some sort of derivative of JavaScript in, so it's kind of born out of JavaScript. And what it is, is a language that is used to represent data. So whereas JavaScript is a programming language to do certain functions, uh, JavaScript object notation or JSON is actually used to just represent data. Very similar to things like XML, where you can just sort of see structures of data uh, and you have all the tags and things like that. JSON is very similar in that sort of regard. So we're just seeing different pieces of data. I said it's quite heavily used in the Power Platform, but it's also quite heavily used in other APIs as well. So the majority of APIs that I've used outside of the Power Platform, um, I've connected to things like uh, Company's House, I've connected to things like um, you know joke sites and, and you know getting pictures of animals, which you've seen. Those usually come back in a JSON format, and therefore I can work with that, use that parse JSON step in Power Automate to actually get that data. So it's quite a common thing and something that you'll probably come across if you work with a lot of APIs. It's also compatible with a lot of other languages that I found. Um, I'm not a developer, so I did some research in before making this video so that I understood everything. And it's actually compatible with a lot of other languages because it's born out of JavaScript. So you can pass this into um, all sorts of other languages and it will just understand it because it is a derivative of JavaScript. There are a couple of key concepts to understand and they're not sound a bit developer-y, but it's okay if you're not a developer. I'm going to try and talk you through them because I'm not a developer and we'll see what we get to. So JSON um, has what's called objects. So um, JavaScript isn't, so as, the, as, it just, as it sounds in the name of it, JavaScript object notation, it's a way to notate objects that you are returned. So what is an object? An object is just a piece of data. So it is like the the, um, the whole block of JSON that you're getting back something is a single JSON object. So I've opened up VS Code here and I've written some examples of uh, what an object is and different properties of JSON. So anything inside of these curly braces here, um, these this is a single object in JSON. So you can see I've got different um, different things inside of here, but this is my JSON object. Now inside of my JSON object, I have what's called key value pairs. So a key value pair is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It is a key and then a value. So I have key value pairs here in different, um, different types. So the first one I've got is strings. Now you'll notice that I've opened the curly, curly braces and then I've got strings inside of double quotation marks. This is required so that it knows that it is a string uh, um, and it will represent it as such. Then I have a colon and then I have another set of double quotation marks and then inside there I've got this is just text. So this is my key. So this is the, the thing that I'm going to maybe pull out and say, right, I want to look at the strings. Um, and then this is the value that when I pull out that strings, this is what's returned to me. And that's all it is. So this is just a string um, of some, so a string is just some text. So after I've done that, I've got a comma at the end of it. And then that denotes that there is another line um, of my JSON object. Um, I've also got numbers, so again, another key value pair. We've got um, in the double quotation marks the name of it, so numbers is the key, 
and then 51 without quotation marks because it's a number. So, it rep so it's represented as a number like that. So again, you just have to kind of be wary of when you use quotation marks, when you don't. If you put quotation marks around the 51, it's going to treat it as a string and not as a number. So it's kind of important that you get these types right so that your JSON works correctly. Uh, null is a special one. Uh, null is special in a lot of programming languages. Um, you can just type null and you can see that in in uh, Visual Studio it has actually turned it blue to mean to denote this a special value. By the way, I'm using Visual Studio because I think it's a good representation of like the different formats and things like that. And uh, we will move to Power Automate and other other programs later. So we've got null there, and again, null doesn't need quotation marks. You can put quotation marks around it, but then it will treat it as a string and not as null. We can also use booleans. So booleans, yes, no, true, false. Um, again, both of these work, true or false. Uh, we do not need quotation marks around these. And again, no, so I've got these colons and I've got these commas at the end of everything. We can also use arrays. So an array is a series of data. So think of it as like lists of things that you that you are getting returned. So in this example, I've used a number array and just put one, two, and three. Uh, arrays are broken down by um, commas as well to separate each element of an array. So um, one is an element, two is an element, three is an element of my array. Um, and I'm using uh, square brackets here to denote that this is an array. And again, that's something that JSON understands. So those are the main types of things that you get inside a JSON, uh, a JSON object. So kind of, I'm hoping that makes sense. But just in case it doesn't, what I'll do is I'll actually write some JSON um, on the fly, a little bit scary, and we'll see if we can uh, make, make, make it make a bit more sense to you. So I've got another file here, um, another JSON file. And what I'll do is I'll open brackets again, or open my braces, and then I just need some key value pairs. So what I will do is I will say um, name, it's going to be my key value pair, and I'll say my name is um, Matt Collins Jones. So at the moment, that's fine. That's what a single key value pair. If I put a comma in, it's going to instantly kind of warn me to say there's a trailing comma, but there's no other data. That's fine. Hit enter, and then I can go uh, occupation. And as I start to type and add something else to the next line, it goes, yep, that's fine. Um, you've got more data, so I go occupation and then another colon, and then double rotation marks, and we'll put in solution uh, architect. Again, that's fine. Um, so again, these are two strings that I'm put, passing in here. I can put um, age. Uh, I can say 33, it was my birthday recently. Um, and I can also go um, is a dev, uh, of which I am not, so I'm going to write false in there. So that's a very simple object that I'm creating inside my inside my um, JSON file there. But I can also create an array. So if I want to create an array, and in an array I don't need just numbers, I can actually have those key value pairs again. So what I will write is I will go, uh, I will call it um, badger pub, uh, and I'm missing comma there, so add that in takes care of the squigglies. Um, and then I use the colon, and then I'll open my square brackets for my array, and I'll just enter there. Uh, and what I'll do is I will enter some key value pairs. So in, in this instance, I'm not going to use um, numbers. If I was to use numbers, I could just type them in here. Because I want to use key value pairs, I actually need to put it inside these curly braces again. So we'll open another set of braces. And we'll type, uh, uh, we'll type name. And then we will type um, Larry in there. Uh, and again, we can add as many as we want here. We can put age or put occupation uh, that. And we'll say he is the landlord. Now that is a single of, that is a single element of my array, but I can add multiple elements. So if I put a comma there and then open the braces again, I can add a new one. So I can say name, 
and then I can add Chris. And I can say occupation, and it's helping me here. Uh, I can know her answer, occupation. And then we can say Chris's occupation is um, bar holder upper. And that's, that's valid JSON. So what I've got here is I've got this top level here, which has like name, occupation, age, is dev, false, badger, pub. And then, then down here, I could interact with potentially this array instead. So as I'm, as I'm working with the JSON, I can see, right, okay, I've got this top level up here, but then I've got also got this array that also shares the same names, the same key value pairs as up here. So as I'm working with this, I can specify whether I want to pull out this name or I can say, actually, I want to go into this badger array here and in this badger array that also contains name and I can pull that out instead. So it's a really easy way to note different pieces of data and contain everything in one place. Now I'll show you these in the next few videos of how to like interact with these arrays or like these like you know if you were working with XML they'd be like sub nodes or nodes um, and we'll walk and we will look at how to work with those but it's important to understand that you can have the same key values in different places but then um, then interact with it slightly differently because the data is structured slightly differently so that is an introduction to JSON um, hopefully it wasn't boring and hopefully it was educational um, I really hope that this has explained something a little bit better for you. If you were struggling with JSON, if this is your first time working with JSON, this is really um, hopefully a, a helpful tutorial. Uh, please let me know what you think about this style of video. I am going outside my wheelhouse a little bit more. Uh, I'm not a developer, but I'm using developer terms because this is something that I, that I do know that I can kind of work with. So um, I do want some feedback on whether you like this type of video or not. Please leave comments down below. Um, if you could like this video and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. Um, and I will see you next time.